Richard Holler at the Historic Grandin Theater is a live storytelling series that's the brainchild of Roanoker Lee Hunsaker. The theme for this episode is The Body. Tellers share tales of lost limbs, negative attitudes about our own bodies, and how to overcome medical and psychological adversity. Blue Ridge PBS Echo is pleased to share these moving stories. Please note that the opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Blue Ridge PBS or the Echo Channel, and be advised that some of the stories contain graphic language and stories about mental and physical abuse, so viewer discretion is advised. Um, as a young man, he saw grown-up man men wrestling a bear at a shopping center and trusted that the life-shaping event was a normal and common thing, <laughs> sort of like quicksand. He could hardly wait for his bear wrestling muscles to come in when he too would be able to fight a bear at a Christmas time shopping center. <laughs> he feels a bit cheated now that he's getting a bit of age. And it's starting to dawn on him that neither bear wrestling nor quicksand are all that common. <laughs> Lean in, first time Roanoke Hooten Hollerer, but a favorite already, Mark Sage. Lewis Grizzard one time said that there is a difference between the word naked and naked. <laughs> naked, he said, means you ain't got no clothes on. Naked means you ain't got no clothes on and you're up to something. <laughs> We was naked. <laughs> now, now bear in mind, this was nearly a quarter of a century ago, so we were younger, thinner, fitter, more live, and generally better looking naked and naked. <laughs> My wife and I had just started our lives together and freshly married, we had moved to this little patch of paradise that was hundreds of miles from civilization surrounded on four sides by woods and a quarter mile up this gravel driveway from the nearest neighbor's house. So being young and in love and new to this Garden of Eden, we did what was right and proper and natural. <laughs> we got naked. <laughs> and there was a hammock involved. Now, now, I don't know why I didn't hear the truck tires crunching on gravel, but I didn't. And if it would have been me, if I'd have been driving a Ford Ranger pickup, hauling four other grown men, and we happened upon a naked couple in a hammock in the middle of the woods, I believe I would have put that truck in reverse and, and eased on back to from where I came. But that's just me. That wasn't them. They put it in park. <laughs> Kindly parallel to where we was in that hammer. My wife was the first to notice that we'd been noticed to discover that we'd been discovered. And brother, she come out of that hammock like a streak. I, I followed her for a couple steps until it dawned on me that I couldn't very well abandon new house and new home and fashion clothes out of fig leaves and, and spend the rest of my days there in the forest. For one, there, there, there ain't no fig trees growing in the mountains of Southwest Virginia. And for two, even if there was, it'd be mighty cold come the wintertime wearing nothing but fig leaf clothing. There, there ain't a whole lot of insulation value in that type of material from what I, I understand. So I stopped and I turned around and I started making my way back down the hill for where that truck was parked. Now in the driver's side was a great big giant of a man and beside him in the passenger seat was a smaller littler feller and in the back there were three grown men of various sizes. 
As I approached the truck, the driver, the big one, opened up his door and planted his feet on the ground. And he twisted himself out from behind the wheel and started standing up. And he just kept on standing and standing and standing and standing until he was good and done, all six foot four, six foot five inches of him. And then he reached out his hand, grabbed hold of mine, and gave it a shake. And even at the time, I felt like that was bizarre behavior. <laughs> he introduced himself as my neighbor and the smaller little fella there in the passenger seat as his neighbor and the three grown men in the back of the bed as their sons. Welcome to the neighborhood, he said. <laughs> I, I thanked him kindly and I told him the same thing and I meant it. Then he told me that he'd been hunting in them woods since he was just a wee littlin' and he was wondering and he apparently had to know that day, that very day, that very instant, if he could continue to do so. I, I told him maybe not today. Eventually we got around to the part of the conversation where we bid our farewells and said our goodbyes and he started twisting himself back into that truck. And as he got himself situated, he looked over at me and invited me to church. I told him I didn't allow it to do much good. And then he told me he'd pray for me. I told him the same thing, but I didn't mean it. <laughs> and and I, don't, I don't believe he did either. Because if he did, and if he did, then prayers didn't get much past the roof of that, of that Ford Ranger pickup. <laughs> Unless he was praying for the exact opposite of what I wanted, which was to get back in that hammock. He put the truck in the gear and he drove it off down the hill and I watched it as it disappeared down the driveway and tires crunching on the gravel. And, and then I turned and walked back up into the woods to fetch my wife. But the moment, as they say, had passed. <laughs> we realized that we were no longer naked, but we were naked. And we hunted around for clothes to cover up our nakedness. Over the years, that neighbor continued to hunt up in there, but he's an old man now. His body done plumb give out, so he don't come around anymore. Nobody much does, so that leaves us there in our own little corner of Eden all by ourselves. But the sin of it is, is over the past 20 some odd years, I've grown into a body ain't nobody wants to see naked or naked. <laughs> And worse still, that hammock is long, long gone. <laughs>